dear friends from all over the world. Uh, thank you for tuning me to this live broadcast. Uh, as I come to you this afternoon, I know you had a very wonderful service. And I know the Lord has spoken to you in a very great way. And uh, right now, as you are tuning in into this great broadcast, I just want to speak to your life. I just want to speak something that God has been putting in my spirit of which I need to speak to you. I know there are things that you've been dealing with and uh, I want you to know that God is always very faithful in what we deal with. Uh, whatever you might be dealing with right now, God is able to deal with that situation. So as I'm coming to you live right now, uh, just a minute, uh, I need you to know that there is something that God has for you. And uh, this is what I want to speak to you this afternoon. There is a message that God has been putting in my spirit about the mystery of the blood. For the last few months, I've been dealing with the mystery of the soil. It's a message that I've been able to move with in different cities, different countries, and different places. This message has been greatly been received by the people of the land, and we have seen great deliverance of the land. And the reason why Jesus came, he came so that his blood could become a ransom between man and God on the earth or on the soil. So which means that by the shedding of the blood of Jesus on the soil, the man that had walked away from the will of God, he was set free from the bondage that is his. And that is why God has given me this word. If you have heard the message of the mystery of the soil or if you are connected to YouTube, you can still find out some of my clips on the same and it will greatly bless you. So this afternoon, I'm speaking from uh, Hebrews chapter number four, verse number two. The Bible says, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as hooked unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in that the word that is King James version it says for indeed the gospel was preached to us as well as to them but the word which they had did not profit them not being mixed with faith in those that had them so when we talk about the mystery of the blood of Jesus we are dealing with the purpose of the blood the purpose of the blood of Jesus Christ and I'm going to take you through some of the mysteries or some of the benefits that are in the blood of Jesus Christ. Most of us, we speak about this blood, but we don't apply it into our lives. We don't apply it into our daily situation. We don't apply it into the things that we deal with them in daily. The purpose of Jesus' incarnation was to shed his blood for us as the song sings, the song sings, and the, most of the times we have sung this song, there is power, want working power in the blood, in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which means that there is power in this blood. And now when we talk about the mysteries or the benefits that are in the blood of Jesus, one of the things that I will begin with to speak to you is that this blood, it came to for cleansing and forgiveness. When we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior in our lives, his blood immediately cleanses us. His blood cleanses us from all our sins. And God looks at you through Jesus' righteousness and he sees only his blood in the light. And that is why sometimes when you walk in the light, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean that you are walking in the perfect righteousness, but it is walking in the light of his exposure, not by hiding anything from him. In the book of 1 John chapter number 1 verse number 7, the Bible says that if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all 
our sins. The blood of Jesus Christ, it cleanses us from all our sins. Every time we walk in the fellowship of each other, the blood of Jesus Christ, it cleanses us from all our sins. I don't know where you are listening to me, but I want you to repeat this word with me. From all our sins. It does not matter the thing that you have gone through in life or what people are telling you. You know, most of the times the world will condemn us best on our past experience. And just because you went through something, it does not mean the thing has been written onto you. When you are in the blood, when you walk in his light, his blood, it cleanses you from all your unrighteousness. I pray that you will see the reason and the power behind the blood so that you can be able to rise up against every form of contamination that the enemy has tried to put upon you. Let me tell you, it does not matter what you have done in the past. So long as the blood of Jesus Christ comes upon your life, this blood, it cleanses us from all our sins. There is power in the blood. And that is why in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse number 21, the Bible says, For he made him who knew no sin to be seen for us that we might become the righteousness of God. My dear listener, stop trying to please people. Stop trying to be in the pocket of people to please them. You are not the righteousness of human beings. You are the righteousness of God. I remember one day, there is a woman when I went to her, I told her that after all the life experience I had gone through, I told her that I have given my life to Jesus. This woman, I remember, she opened to me the book of Isaiah, chapter number 1, verse number 15. And she told me that the Bible says that though you lift up your hand before me, your sins are too much blooded that I cannot listen to you. At that time was the most disappointing part in my life, trying to share my testimony with somebody, and somebody uses a scripture to bring me down. But when I came to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, that for he made him who knew no sin. Let me tell you, you, your life, you knew sin, but him that was made, to, that knew no sin, he was made to become sin so that you can become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. You are not the righteousness of your religion. You are not the righteousness of people, but you are the righteousness of God. I want you to know that you are the righteousness of of God. Confess with me louder where you are that I am the righteousness of God. Write it again. If you can comment it in a comment by shouting it that I am the righteousness of God. Somebody say I am the righteousness of God. You are not the righteousness of people. You know, sometimes people will make you feel guilty. They will make you feel unworthy. They will make you feel unwanted. They will make you feel unwarranted. But because Jesus was made to become sin, so that to become the righteousness of God, I want you from today to walk with confidence and boldness and tell that devil that has been fighting you that I am the righteousness of God. Number two mystery about the blood of Jesus, the blood came for redemption. Redemption means to buy. It means to take back. We were sold into slavery to sin under the Satan's control. But when Jesus said his blood for our sins, we were set free from the power of sin. You were purchased by the blood of Jesus. You belong to him. The blood of Jesus has redeemed us, has redeemed us from the trap of the devil. I was somewhere and preaching and then I, a man came to me and told me, man of God, you see I'm born again but I've got a struggle with me women. This man is a church leader but he has got more than seven women, all of them are fighting around him. They want, they want him to marry them. 
I told the man, you cannot pretend to be born again while you are struggling in such a thing. Because these are the things, they are the bondages that Jesus has redeemed you from. And I pray that through this telecast, whatever you might be struggling with, I pray that the redemptive power will flow from everything that you are struggling with. It might be your ancestral curse. It might be a spirit from where you were born. It might be a curse from where you are coming from. I decree that may the mystery of redemption deliver you in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, shout a big amen. Somebody shout a big amen. The blood of Jesus came to redeem us. And that is why in Ephesians chapter number 1 verse number 7, the Bible says, In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his glory. In other words, redemptive power does not just redeem you, but it gives you redemption according to to the riches of his glory. In other words, God is loaded too much that any demand that was supposed to be demanded to buy you back, God was ready to pay it. And that is why he gave his only precious son. His son is more precious than any other gold. His son is more precious than any other money. And that is why he gave him so that you can be redeemed. You can be set free. You can be delivered from every bondage of the enemy. I pray today, whatever bondage, whatever has made you slavery over your life, I pray that let it lose you in the name of Jesus. That the blood of redemption, let it work over you. Number three, deliverance. Deliverance. You remember Moses. In the book of Exodus, the children of Israel are in Egypt. God tells him, tonight I'm going to pass over. And while I'm passing over, I want you to put the blood on your doorpost. And when I'm killing the Egyptian, the firstborn of the Egyptian, I'll be passing over you. In other words, whenever there is blood, the, wherever there is the blood, destruction cannot attack your life. And I decree that let the blood of Jesus cover you. I speak the blood of Jesus over your family. I speak the blood of Jesus over your ministry. I speak the blood of Jesus over your church. I speak the blood of Jesus over everything that is connected to you. Deliverance. Redemption can be translated as deliverance. That is why which was purchased through Jesus Christ, there is a delivering power in the precious blood of Jesus Christ. It was the blood of the Lamb that brought Israel, that brought Israel deliverance. They had to put it on their doorpost. They were told to put it on their doorpost. And that's why the Bible says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. That is Luke chapter 4. Verse 18, to bring deliverance unto those who are in captivity. So there is deliverance in the blood. He has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim acceptable ear of the Lord. So the blood of Jesus brings deliverance. That is why Revelation 12, 11 says that, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. Whatever is fighting against you, let the blood of Jesus be able to give you the victory. In Revelation chapter 9, Romans chapter 12, 11, verse 26, the Bible says, As it is written, out of the mouth of Zion shall come out a deliverer, shall come forth a deliverer. The blood of Jesus releases deliverance unto us. Number four, it releases abundance. The blood comes with abundance. In Exodus, when Israel left Egypt, the Bible says the angel of God passed over them, all who had applied the blood to their doorpost from death. And the bondage of Pharaoh, they left Egypt with their goods and riches. They were loaded that they could not stand even what they were carrying. 
God blessed them too much that even the Egyptians themselves, the Bible says, they looted the Egyptians. And that's why in Exodus chapter number 12, verse 35 to 36, the Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and clothing. The Lord had made the Egyptians favorably disposed towards the people and they gave them that they asked for. So they planted the Egyptian. The blood of Jesus, the blood will make you to take everything that belongs to you. Abundance. It gives them abundance. In first, second, in John chapter 10, verse 10, the Bible says, I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. The blood of Jesus gives you abundant life. And that is why I pray that if you are sick in your body, Right now, by the confession of the blood, may you receive life in the name of Jesus. I know the doctor has said something that is not usual over your life. But I pray today that this blood will penetrate through over your body system and will bring healing over your life in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus releases healing. It releases abundance. Receive the life. That is why in the blood of Cain, the blood of Abel, it was crying out for revenge. It was a blood that was speaking death. But when Jesus came and his blood entered into the soil, the blood of Jesus took away the death of Abel. And the blood of Jesus brought the life into the soil. That's why when your soil meets your blood, your soil becomes healed in the name of Jesus. I pray that everything that is connected to you now, maybe it is your job that is not functioning, your business is not successful. Let the blood release a healing in Jesus' name. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 2, verse 8. The, chapter 9, verse 8. The Bible says, God is able to make all grace abound to you that you may sufficiently have all things, may have an abundance of every good work. In other words, when God supplies this grace, it makes you become successful in whatever you do. I pray that this 2018, things will begin to work. Things will get themselves in order for you. Whatever has not been functional or non-functional in your life, it will begin to function. You will begin to experience the great abundance of the Lord in the name of Jesus. If you believe it, let me hear you shout, Amen. Isaiah chapter 60 verse 5, the Bible says, The wealth of the seas will be brought to you, to you, the riches and the abundance of the sea will come unto you. It is the Lord that gives you power to gain wealth. When you are connected to him, he gives you power to gain wealth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know where you are listening. Thank you, Pastor. Peace. God bless you, sir. I hope you had a very great service. It's a blessing to have you Friday. Muelo. Please tell me where you are watching me from. I just want to be sure that I'm not speaking to myself, but I'm talking to somebody somewhere that God is speaking to directly in the name of Jesus. Let me know where you are, you are listening me from and let me know what you are tapping in the name of Jesus. I say that God is about to release abundance. That is why in a Psalms chapter number 35, verse number 27, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his saints. The plan of God is to give you abundance, is to give you abundance, is to make you become supplied with everything that you need. Then number five, we find that the mystery in the blood is life. In fact, the, the blood God told to the children of Israel that you should not eat any animal with blood in it. Leviticus chapter number 17 verse number 11. The life of the flesh is in the blood and I've given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. So the life of the flesh is in the blood. Let me pause a little bit. There are people I know I'm talking to right now. You like eating mutura. In Kenya, we call it mutura. Mutura is a mixture of blood and some pieces of meat. And especially you find very nice girls 
beautiful ones that are anointed and created in the image of God. You will find them on the street queuing for Mutura. And they eat the blood. I want you to know whenever you eat blood, you are sinning. It is sin to eat blood. I repeat, it is sin to eat blood. Anytime you eat or drink blood, you have already drunk the life of the creature. I don't care about your culture. Your culture might be drinking blood, but it is not the plan of God. God says, I have given you the life of the flesh is in the blood. In other words, you have to eat the flesh, but let the ground, let the soil swallow up the blood. Let the soil, the food of the soil is the blood. That's why, let me tell you something that is very powerful here. If Jesus was coming to preach and do all miracles that he did, I believe Jesus could have been still around up to now. Because his main agenda was not coming to do miracles, was not coming to give people bread, was not coming to make people be healed, was not coming to set the captive free. The main agenda of Jesus was not in his physical appearance. The main agenda of Jesus was in the blood. That's why the soil, because it was defiled, it needed the blood. It started with Moses. Moses was told that every time you have to sacrifice, you must shed the blood. So the blood of Jesus is the blood that carried life for the earth. The Bible says, for God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son. What God gave in the son, he, he created the son. He made him to become a bucket. And inside the bucket, he put a package that is called the blood. Jesus came as a container. But inside the container was the blood. That blood was the content that was carrying life for man. Without the shedding of the blood, that is what the scripture says, without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission of sin. So it does not matter whether they crucified him or not, but if there was no blood, there was not going to be, there was no life that man was going to receive. And that is why there is life in the blood. This life, when you confess it, when you are sick and you are told you are going to die, confess the life of Jesus Christ. Confess the life of the blood. And when you confess this life, this life begins to work for you. And I'm here to speak to somebody that thinks that life has brought you to an end. I speak the life of Jesus into your life system. I speak it in the name of Jesus. No wonder the scripture says that I will not die but live to declare the greatness of God. There's life in the blood. There's life in the blood. And that is why he says that I have given you life. John chapter 10 verse 10. I have come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. There's life in the blood system of Jesus. And that is why this life you must partake of it. You must accept it to become part and parcel of you. There is life of Jesus. There is life in the blood. Isaiah 60 verse number 5. Then you will look and radiant be radiant. Your heart will throb and swell with joy. Isaiah 35 verse number 10. Those the Lord has request has request those the Lord has Required to return, they will enter Zion with singing, everlasting joy will crown them, and joy will overtake them, and sorrow and sighing will flee away. I pray that let sorrow leave you. I'm talking to somebody right now that you are in sorrow. I know something has happened to you, and you don't understand how to deal with it. There is sorrow in your heart. You try to handle it, but you are not able. I pray that may the Lord heal your spirit in the name of Jesus. Whatever pain that you are facing, I pray that the blood of Jesus that releases life, let it come into you in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. 
Somebody say amen. Oh, thank you, thank you, my sister Lebo. Thank you, Themba. Themba Martin Masango. God bless you. Thank you, Tiafago. God bless you from South Africa. It's a blessing to connect to you right now. In First John chapter 1, verse number 4, and these things write we unto you. Let your joy, that your joy might be full. Number 5, number 6. The mystery of the blood is victory. Victory. There's nothing the devil fears like the blood because the blood gives you victory. Receive your victory. Victory. Revelation chapter 12 verse 1. Victory. Edit. Thank you. God bless you. Victory. Victory is a three-step process. Victory. The blood of the Lamb, this refers to believers in tribulation period. So we find that in Revelation, the Bible says they overcame him by the blood and by the word and their testimony. They overcame the devil by the blood of the lamb. Their blood, the blood of the lamb. There is nothing the devil fears like the blood. Because he knows that every time the blood is introduced into war, that is a sign of victory that has been put into place. Whenever you speak over the blood, you apply the blood of Jesus over everything. When you're driving, apply the blood of Jesus over the road. When you are going to work, that office, today is Sunday. Yesterday was Saturday. You don't know. Some people are too wicked in this office. They don't even come to work on Mondays or Tuesdays. But they will come on Sunday with their witch doctors so that they can perform rituals on where you sit. I want you when you go back on Monday, take the anointing oil, speak the blood of Jesus on that chair. Let the witch, witchcraft and the charms they try to put on your seat backfire unto them. And whatever they are trying to do so that they can take over your position, let the blood of Jesus backfire against them in Jesus' name. So tomorrow take the blood of Jesus. Go with it. Apply it in your office. Apply it in your car. Some of you don't know somebody's looking after that position. I've been a pastor and a prophet for the last few years. I've seen things. You can find even somebody's after your husband and you don't know. They go to consult a witch doctor. If they ask us some of these questions, how about you? How about those witches? They will go there. They will tell the witch, I want you to reverse this man to become my husband. So I want you to apply the blood of Jesus. When you are praying, pray for your family. Some of you, when you sleep, you don't know who, who goes around your home at night. That building that you started in the village, do you know the reason why you are going there? Look at me. Some of you, the blood of the goat and the blood of the pig, the blood of the sheep has become very powerful than you yourself. No wonder that is why that blood has made you not to go back. Why? Because somebody came with a goat. He came with a sheep slaughtered it there, left it and made some vows in that blood. That's why you are not able to complete your project. But today I'm sending you back with the blood of Jesus. Anything they try to put it Hey Reverend Setorili, you must come back home my brother or we join you there now. God bless you. I can see you. God bless you. <laughs> you are watching at a mug. God bless you. You must be able to go back and speak the blood. I tell you, let me give you a short testimony. I was in my village some two years back. I was building my house. I had given some boys to work bricks for me. One of my neighbors, an old woman, came. And when she came, she asked the boy to give her, to give her the soil that they were making bricks for. So these boys, they asked this old woman, why do you want the soil so that you can go and smear your cooking stones? Is there no soil in your compound? She said, no, just give me some soil. And the Lord reminded me one time when I was praying that this woman came in the middle of the night and picked the soil and went poured the blood of a chicken on top of it. And that is the time my things were tight. I was struggling. When I went back to my village one day, I took the oil. I declared war against this. I poured the blood of Jesus everywhere, pouring the oil. And I declared war against this witch doctor. One night I was sleeping, I dreamt two big snakes that looked like a python. 
they were dead and they were bite, biting each other. They were dead, the two of them. And the Lord told me, the bondage that I've been struggling, you know, to finish your house has been defeated. From that day, I got money two weeks later and I finished my project without any struggle. Somebody you are listening to me, every time you start something, there's always a backwardness. Maybe somebody goes on your back and sacrifices an animal against you. They sacrifice a sheep behind you. They sacrifice a goat against you. They sacrifice a chicken against you. And the blood of these animals is speaking against you. I declare today, by the reason of the blood that comes in the victory of the blood of Jesus, let this blood go with you in Jesus' name. I lose you in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Shout a big amen. Thank you, sir. The blood of the Lamb. This refers to believers. Who can be able to hold the blood? Three things I told you. You must have the blood. You must have a testimony. You must also have the word. It is your word that creates your own word. It is the word that you speak on your mouth. That becomes the next word that you need. If you can speak it to your mouth, so shall it be. Stop confessing negative things. Stop speaking how defeated you are. Stop saying how you are weak. Begin to speak life. Let the word of God that comes out of your mouth begin to speak victory. I command that from today, whatever has tried to bring you down, may you speak life in Jesus' name. There is victory in the blood of Jesus. Whenever we speak about this, the blood of Jesus gives us victory. The blood of Jesus gives us victory. In whatever you do, let the blood of Jesus give you victory. I pray today, let this blood give you victory. In 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse number 20, the Bible says, For all the promises of God in him are yes and amen unto the glory of God. By us, the promises are yes and amen. Do you have a husband? Yes and amen. Do you have a car? Yes and amen. Don't confess things that are defeating for the promises of God. He might have promised he will fulfill it. Don't run from one prophet to another. Don't run from one witch doctor to another. If God has promised you through that prophet, and you have confirmed that this is the word of God. Believe. It will come to pass. I want you to know, believe. Thank you, Joseph. Jebba. Hey, Jebetize. Boise, boys. God bless you for listening. Wherever you are, God bless you. Romans chapter 8, verse number 31. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? Hmm. Hallelujah. If God be for us, who can be for us? Who can be against us? The witches cannot be against you. Even that person that is trying to pick a letter and say that they are going to suck you. If God is on your side, they cannot be against you. And tonight I prophesy, whatever has been against you, I reverse it, it will be for you. Whoever has been against you, I decree, they will begin to be for you in Jesus' name. Somebody say, Amen. And that's what the Bible says, that in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You are more than a conqueror. Number seven, the mystery in the blood is healing. And that's why when Jesus shed his blood, he became our Passover lamb. And that's why we must apply the blood to the doorpost of our hearts and claim the healing provided through his atoning blood. Claim it every time you are praying. Speak healing over you. Speak healing over your business. Speak healing of the blood over everything that is connected to you. Some of us, you might be not sick in the body, but you are sick in the spirit. You are sick in the mind. You are struggling with something that you are dealing with. You don't know how to handle it. I want you to know that there is healing in the blood. And this healing is coming to you right now. Before I close, I'm going to pray for you. 
I want to believe with somebody tonight that the Lord might release a healing over you. That whatever has tried to put you down, may God use it to raise you up in Jesus' name. Somebody say amen. Say amen. In Isaiah chapter number 53, verse number 3 is a very good scripture. The Bible says that he was afflicted for our sins. We esteemed him as if we knew him, but he was beaten and by his stripes we are healed. These are the scriptures that you ought to, to confess. In Exodus chapter 15 verse number 26, I'll put none of these diseases on you which I have put on the Egyptians, the word, for the Lord I am your leader. God says, I will put none of this sickness. When you apply the blood of Jesus, none of this sickness will follow you. None of them. None of them. The last mystery, number eight, as I close, the last mystery is that access to possess. We were separated from God, but because of the blood of Jesus, the curtain was torn into two. From the top to the bottom. And the Bible says we, are, we were able to see into holy of holy. We were separated because God separated us because of sin. We were access is the right of entry through the favor of another. That's why Jesus has given us the right of entry to reach God wherever we want. Every time you put the blood of Jesus upon yourself, you are able to reach him. And that is why this curtain was torn so that you can be able to reach him. And that is why all who come to God through the blood of Jesus have right of entry into his presence. Take the advantage of the divine privilege of the blood that has already purchased you. It is the blood of the great price. We have all right or a right of access. You don't need anybody to tell you that they are going to see God for you. You have got a right for yourself to meet God for you. And wherever you call upon the blood of Jesus, he is able to listen to you wherever you are. Am I talking to somebody this afternoon? Wherever you rise up and talk to him, he is able to listen to you. Let me tell you, you don't need a church leader. You don't need a prophet for him to go so that he can go to consult God for you. You can be able to reach God. I'm speaking to somebody that feels that they are unworthy. You don't need need anybody you just need the blood you don't need anything but you just need the blood when you carry this blood you have got two things before you the first one you access and the second one you possess in other words you cannot access what you can you cannot possess what you haven't yet possessed. And that is why this blood of Jesus has given us the opportunity so that we can access everything that belongs to us in the name of Jesus Christ. That's why even in our biological father, there is what we call a will. A will, you can only possess it if you have got an opportunity to access it. And that is why our will is in the blood of Jesus. When you have the blood of Jesus, you have got the ability to access unto your father and whatever you need from your father you possess it. I speak right now as I prophesy over your life. May you begin to possess everything that belongs to you. Possess your house in the mighty name of Jesus. Possess your marriage in the name of Jesus. Possess your job in the name of Jesus. They told you that you can never go anywhere. I say may you begin to possess nations. Even those who told you that you will never go anywhere. I say may you begin to possess in the name of Jesus. And that's why Romans chapter 5 verse number 2. On by whom we also we have access by faith into his grace within we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And Hebrews chapter number 10 verse 19 to 22. The Bible says, therefore brethren having boldness to enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus Christ by a new and a living way which we inaugurated for us through the validated is this flesh and since we have agreed a great high priest ever the house of God let us draw near with a sincere heart in full assurance of faith draw near with a sure uh, with a full assurance 
of faith. The boldness that we have is through the blood of Jesus Christ. And you are getting into his place with the sure assurance that whatever God has for you, let it become your portion in the name of Jesus. I speak that let the blood of Jesus that gives us the access to possess. The blood that gives us access to possess. I don't know what you have not yet possessed, but today because you got this blood into your heart, may you begin to access everything that you have never possessed before, that you have never stepped before. I speak to you now, right now, as a prophet of God. Let the nations open up for you. Let things that are beyond human understanding begin to open up for you. Let these mysteries of the blood, let them begin to work for you. And I declare today as a prophet of God, any other blood that has ever fought against you, even if it is an ancestral blood that has always denied you an access into the great abundance of God, I command that evil blood to be broken. Any blood that is fighting against you, I decree that that blood is broken. And today I decree, let the blood of Jesus begin to speak over your life. Let the blood open up your marriage. Let the blood open up your business. Let the blood open up your job. Let the blood open up your things. Whatever was denied over your life, let the blood of Jesus access you into it in Jesus' name. Raka posanda la Rivu jamili bati. Thank you. It's good to see you. Thank you, uh, Pastor George Siakumila from Zambia. God bless you. It's a blessing to see you. The blood of Jesus gives you access to possess. The blood of Jesus gives you access to possess. I'm praying today that this blood, wherever you are, I want to believe with you as I'm going to close, that right now this blood will begin to give you access to possess. Some of you, ancestral blood has been your greatest denial to opportunities. Some are born into blood that is full of a curse. Some are carrying the blood of struggle. Some are carrying the blood of rejection. Some are carrying the blood of denial. Some are carrying the blood of witchcraft. But today, let the blood of Jesus begin to speak to you let this blood speak to you in high offices let this blood speak to you for you in high level offices that even those who denied you access let them see the blood of jesus working for you i want you where you are stretch your hands over this video i want you to lay your hand there maybe you are in the hospital maybe you are driving maybe you are somewhere taking coffee I want to pray for you that this blood will not only give you access because it is one thing to access something. It is another thing to possess. I'm not talking about access. I talk about access to possess. Today, let this blood access you to things that you can possess. Some of you, the blood of Jesus will access you to money and will possess wealth. I want to pray for you, wherever you are. I want, you, I want to give you a few minutes as we listen to this song that you have to send me your prayer request. Thank you for Rev. Jamil Bahati from India. Thank you for the prayer request about your family. I just want us to go into this worship. In five minutes or in less than three minutes, I'm coming back so that we pray together. Gentle Savior, won't you hear my heart more cry?
to Jesus and you want to surrender your life, I want to give you this opportunity where you are watching me from. I want you to pray this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the blood that you shed on the cross. I receive you as Lord and Savior of my life. I refuse Satan. I accept you, Jesus. Enter into my heart and forgive me. I pray today I will serve you the rest of my days in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen. <laughs> Tonight is your turning point. Tonight is your turning point. This could be that one of the nights that you will never ever forget in your life. Even in the ministry. Because turning point has to do with a decisive. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I want you to share this video. Share it to many of your friends as quick, as much as possible. Let them know about the mystery of the blood. Because if we don't apply some of these things, they can never work for us. I want you to share it out. Share it to all your friends. Very quickly, let me take you through as I'm going to close. The, I said the mystery of the point. Point number one, I said access to possess. The blood will always help you to possess. The blood will help you. There is access and possess. Then there is healing. Then there is victory. There is victory. Wherever you are listening me from, there is victory. There is victory in the blood of Jesus. There is victory. I talked about victory. There is life in the blood of Jesus. This life is life and life more abundance. There is abundance. That is number. There is abundance. There is deliverance in the blood. There is deliverance in the blood. There is deliverance in the blood of Jesus. There is deliverance in the blood. Those are five points that I've given you quickly. There is deliverance in the blood. There is deliverance in the blood. Deliverance in the blood. There is the redemption in the blood. Then the last point, there is, there is what we call cleansing and forgiveness in the blood. God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. I just have to, in the next few minutes, I'll be in a revival service. I want you to pray for me. I had a very powerful service this morning. And I was speaking about, I was speaking about it is about to rain on the land. Very powerful message. It's about to rain on the land. And it was massive. It was great. Today I'm having a revival service and I'm just loaded with what God is about to do in this area. So God bless you wherever you're watching us. Uh, just keep on sharing the video. Just keep on sharing. Just keep on releasing your comments so that we can know what the Lord is doing. If you are sick, I want you to believe that through the prayer that I pray for you, God has healed you. God bless you and thank you. Amen.